I thought I'd do a little video today, putting a bit of tutty on, as my mum would call it. When we were kids, my mum used to put lipstick on. She'd go, I'm just going to put some tutty on. I don't know where she got that from. So wow. mum, what are you doing? Putting me tutty on. I wanted to update the people who are absolutely waiting with bated breath to hear about my ankle. I can't let you down. I, I mean, I know. I know that I have an audience of at least one who's interested in this. I thought, right. So I took to my bed, made Ron do everything. What, what am I going to do to support myself as I'm doing this? The word convalescence came to mind and I thought, I quite like this idea of convalescing. You know, in years gone by, they used to actually have convalescent hospitals. They didn't have antibiotics then, so people took longer to heal. Whereas now you just get shunted out of the doctors and hospitals pretty quick, told to just get back on your feet and get going. And I thought, I want to be a proper convalescer. And so I, I started to Google paintings of people. And in fact, there are loads and loads of paintings of people convalescing, going back hundreds of years, lying on beds and like this, which covers up to here. and somebody sitting at the side of them like this and I thought that's nice you know caring for people like bringing them tea as I was going out of my mind with boredom I started to think about Nick had said about that he thought this was an inflamed ligament so I thought ligaments ligaments let's start googling ligaments the only article that I found was about horses how to deal with a horse with an injured ligament. So I thought, right, well, just imagine you're a horse, Jane. All you can do is rest is, is rest the horse and put it out to pasture. So I thought, right, imagine you're in a field, put the horse out to pasture for a year. And at the end of that year, if you've got a foal out of it, well, great. Well, I don't think I'm going to be getting a foal out of this, let alone a child at my age. And then I decided to um, start using crutches until I started to catch myself in the mirror looking like my Nana Lancaster I was hobbling around on these crutches one day and I looked at myself and I just caught myself in a mirror and I was like and I went <gasps> my Nana Lancaster had a knee replacement and never really walked properly again and uh, became a bit of a she used to like milk it a bit you know and she'd go up to things like with, she'd walk up with a stick and she'd go up to get up the uh, stairs and uh, she'd touch the, what do they call that? You know, uh, you hold on to it. Bannister! But instead of going to t touch the bottom of the bannister, she, she knew you were watching and not trusting her. We were all stand there like that. In a Well, we tried to be a little bit more polite than that. So then she'd, she'd be like that and <laughs> she'd start to go like this for the bannister. And we'd like go up and help her and she'd be like oh, thank you so i didn't want to end up like that so i so i decided to get rid of the crutches i just one day i just thought screw these damn crutches and i flung them what happened was i started to get slightly obsessed with the whole business ron and i were driving down the road and when we got to the lights at the bottom of mosley at the railway station this woman was crossing the street and she was limping She's limping. Look, she's limping. And guess what? She was wearing sketches. She had these blooming things on. The same. So I was like that, watching across in the road. And she, she wasn't happy as she was limping towards the railway station. She looked at me and gave me a dirty look, actually. And I felt like she's opening the window and going, I'm limping too. Look. I've got sketches on like you. I go for a coffee with Ron. That two weeks was on the crutches and I'd go down into the place with him on the crutches and sit there and have a coffee and you know people would come in like couples in their 60s going hiking together with backpacks and stuff and they'd be sitting having a coffee and I'd just be staring at them like and I'd be like did you have a nice walk and they'd say oh yes thank you and I'd be like I can't walk and they'd say oh Really? And I'd say, yes, look, I've got crutches, I've been to... And then I'd... The physio said... Blah, 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 blah. One woman said, oh my God, that's my worst nightmare. I'd, I'd hate it if I couldn't walk. And I was like, 
Yeah. Oh yeah. Enjoy your walk. So you know how you get obsessed with things like that. So anyway, I then um, was looking for solutions, I suppose, in my obsession. And I came across this guy. First of all, I was, somebody's banging in the kitchen. I know what it is, it's Ron. Do you know what he's doing? He's battering a couple of chicken breasts within an inch of the bloody life. Because he's gonna be doing some fancy bloody chicken stuffed with blue cheese and bacon and God knows what else for dinner tonight. I know. I'm sat here doing videos while he's battering chicken breasts. Then I found, as I was ligamenting my head off, I came across something called RS, repetitive strain injury, and I thought, repet, can you hear him? I've had repetitive strain injury, I think, in, in here when I've been knitting, I had to stop knitting. I went to see the doctor and I said, I've got this terrible pain here and I can't knit. And she just went, tough. This is a woman down Mosley. Listen, don't even get me started on her. I move, I've moved doctors since. Well, that wasn't the first, that was the first thing. There was a lot more after that with her. Oh, and that's the other thing. This ankle pain started two weeks after I had a horrible experience last year with a person who was very unforgiving, shall we say. <laughs> um, and it was very stressful. It made me incredibly angry but there was nothing I could do you know when this person was not and I don't have experiences like this very often in my life I used to have them with men from time to time but this person was so you know when you could, there's just nothing you can do they will not that was that was it mm, dead you are dead so there was nowhere to put my anger and I had to just stuff it down. People just say, let it go, just move on, let it go. I was talking about it a lot at the time and just wanting to process it. It was kind of getting on people's nerves, I could tell, so I just stuffed it down and tried to let it go, forget it, move on. Um, but I, actually what happened was the ankle pain started two weeks after that. I mean, Louise Hay would have had a lot to say about that. New agey friends mentioned her, so I did look it up and it still didn't click. And then one day, I'll pat myself on the back for this. I don't pat myself on the back for much, but I'm patting myself on the back for this. I found this article, Dr. Sarno. This guy says, more or less, it's all in here. And he said that nine, no, 80% of the people who read his book, and basically, to cut a long story short, <laughs> Dr. Sarno is the one. I have found the answer from all this blithering drama around this ankle, I found the cure. And that is to bloody well ignore it. And to say to that ankle, bring it on, I don't care. I'm gonna walk. I'm gonna do what I want. I'm gonna jump for joy. I'm gonna do my knee and you are not stopping me. Because he says the brain creates the pain to avoid our emotions. And he says, you know, and here we are. You see, it leads me full circle right back to a year ago. He said the pain is the mind's way of distracting us from repressed anger. If ever the pain gets bad, you know something's upsetting you. What is it? Rather than focus on the pain, which we are so conditioned to do, and that's what I've been doing for a year. Worry about, I know there's nothing wrong with my ankle. I've had an MRI, I've had an X-ray. There's nothing wrong with it. There never has been anything wrong with it. We worry, oh, oh, if I use it, oh, but this and that. But from now on, I, just, I don't want to talk about it. I'm not talking about it anymore. Sorry. I know, I know you're expecting me to talk about my ankle from now on. 
Don't ask me how my ankle is, because I'm not going to tell you. There will be no more talking of ankles. There will be no more focusing on pain. The other day I went for a walk up to 20 trees with Ron. Yeah, it was hurting. But instead of going, oh God, it's hurt, focus, and focus. I thought, what would Emily Bronte do? Nothing would stop her walking the moors. And so up I trudged. I'd have kept saying, I'm Emily Bronte. Well, now granted, she died in her late 20s of tuberculosis, probably because she walked those moors all the time. But you know what I mean. Read Dr. Sarno.